Well, Evan is back again. Man, that guy is busy with another design. And he calls this one the Knob Goblin. Made of solid brass, this thing is extremely heavy at two ounces. Now you notice this is a Diablo shape, just really long. And with these really long projectiles, the issue is always stability. Can we keep it stable? If you haven't checked out Evan's page, you ought to check it out. Sometimes he actually sells reproductions of some of the projectiles he's made and we've tested on this channel. Now one of the things I have to figure out is how to make these wacky projectiles work. So we're going with a double Sabo so we have full support of the projectile up front and in the back. The velocity will only be about a thousand feet per second. Yeah, subsonic. Welcome back calculator folks. Jeff and OG out here with you wearing the OG finger wiggle t-shirt. <laughs> hey, Evan from Texas sent us the BBB, the big brass bullet. I mean bullet, <laughs> sure, that's what I meant. It is a big, it's just a big piece of brass, two ounces. And this thing's heavy, man. I, a minute ago, I went swimming over there with it. It pulled me straight to the bottom. <laughs> so uh, big old heavy two ounce round, probably gonna have a good thump to it. We're gonna test it out downrange with Doug on some soft body armor and some other things for you. And we're going to see what it does, see if we can capture one too to show you. Oh yeah. We're going to run it out, we're going to accelerate it out of the mass accelerator though. Uh, we don't want to use any firearms in this video, so. We are at a proper rifle or shooting range. Right, this is the... Um, I don't know, gonna, insert funny uh, name here. To cut the, <laughs> this, is the, this is the Michael Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg campaign memorial range <laughs> where we will mass accelerate these downrange so <laughs> those guys are drilling for oil next door to us so hey can we keep it down over there please okay please thank you with, please bear with the sound of uh, <laughs> the sound of drilling on the range all right <laughs> enough let's get to it that's a lot of brass right there that is a huge huge piece of brass that's like a bigger than a baby's a bfb as we would say <laughs> scientific terms okay um that i mean look at it, it's like a pimp chalice or something it's so huge <laughs> but the vest stopped it without any problem big subsonic round yeah i didn't expect it to go through the it's not pointed so it's gonna and jeff re reviewed the play-by-play -play footage um and you said it was flying straight it looked like it was flying true and and nice. did it hit where you're aiming? You said you were aiming a little right to the. I aimed uh, a little right of the other two marks. And there hit, you go. Yeah, I think it was wow. one of those two. But man, that is a big piece of brass. Looks like a, a doorknob or something. I don't know. Or a handle off of a fireplace <laughs> poker or something. Something. That's cool. It's threaded and everything. It is threaded, yeah. So it was designed for something else. But it, it's, it's cool because it's got the Diablo shape and everything still. That might help, you know? Yeah. I expected, I, I really thought it would tumble. I, and I really thought we'd, to get any performance out, we'd need full rifling, not just a rifle choke. So we did, or we just, you use a rifle choke on your Benelli. So man, that's impressive. And the recoil, I don't know if you guys heard, was not all that crazy. I was expecting a good mule kick to the shoulder, but it was pretty much like shooting a standard old uh, Foster. Yeah, I, my, I didn't bring my chronograph, because I didn't think we were going to test these today, but they're probably around subsonic or, or less. In test number one, the projectile is flying absolutely beautifully. We'll slow it down a little bit and analyze what's going on. Target acquired. Now even though this was intended to have spin stabilization through the rifle choke, there's the slug is not spinning at all. It's perfectly stable without spin and that just blows my mind. It's actually very difficult to stabilize a projectile without that angular momentum. So it's looking like Evan has another winning design here. Let's try putting this through some Russian ballistic gelatin. Yes. All right, Russian, Russian ballistic gel. Bella, Nella, Tasturiansky, Rasoy, Mayak Potenska. In Americansky, Tompelsky. It's only slightly uh, clearer than your clear ballistic gel. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I can't buy a $150 block for every video. No, that thing is that stuff is ridiculously expensive. I looked into it. No way. Okay, Russian ballistic gel. All I'm right, ready. Here we go. You ready? Yep. Ooh. Hey, Poppy! Hey. Oh, it was sideways. full on sideways on that one. So you can see the permanent wound cavity in this ballistic gel. <laughs> Did you put a the, thermometer in there? The, the, yeah, I calibrated this. Uh, with a BB gun? With a BB gun. <laughs> like peeing outdoors. Peeing, peeing outdoors. 
But uh, man, I don't know. You, we need a metal detector or something to get it out of there. It's not all that deep, and it's oh okay. It's coming out. Oh, look at that! Ready to go. Holy, I mean, holy lord, it's hot. Scuffed up a little bit, but it's, ah! yeah, it's hot, puppy. Look at the weird spirals on it. And stuff. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, brass is a pretty solid metal too. That thing is not all that. It's not deformed. It's just got uh, <laughs> multi-tool marks on it right there. Yeah, you ruined it. Thanks, Greg. And uh, and scuffed up a little bit on here from plowing into the wood. This is an interesting part. And I don't know what this is. The other one had that little scuff right there on the leading edge. Yeah. I don't know. Is it's, that? It? It's probably due to the barrel harmonics. Oh yeah, the, and the <laughs> and the. Um, the Coriolis effect. Yeah. Clearly it's the Coriolis effect. Barrel harmonics. <laughs> bumping into the cor like this. That's yeah. what's going on. Right. <laughs> and El Nino. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you're paying attention, you probably saw the really mangled up green sabo in the first shot, which we also see in the second shot. In order to engage the rifling, the diameter of the projectile has to be nearly perfect. I would say that the diameter of these were probably 10 to 20 thousandths of an inch too large. Okay, one inch aluminum plate. I'm gonna aim right for that green clover. <laughs> and, uh, Yellow moons and silver stars. See if we can make it through. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Okay, what happened? Well, I was aiming for the green clover. It hit a little bit low. Um, you tell me on the high speed camera. It, that it, it was. It was, it was kind of flying. It was. It was flying stable, but it was like I think it was like nose. It was just flying at a weird angle, well, but it, it wasn't flying sideways. It was just like, like it was coming in for a landing or something. So the engines in the front. <laughs> that's probably why. Yeah. And, I mean, my prediction. I thought it was going to burrow deep into this, but aluminum, an, an inch of aluminum, awfully dangerous. Yeah, I can't think of any 12 gauge round that is uh, can pierce that. Ray K from uh, Visalia donated this. They, yeah, he's like, how come you're not shooting sure no one, one inch plates? Like, well, that, there you go. There's almost but, no damage to that thing. Yeah, that thing made a good scuff, but I mean, a scuff. That now, you know what? Okay, this would be a. What do you think it'll do to the lead plate? I don't know. I think it's probably going to burrow itself in. I don't. If it only deep. went in that far. You think it'll go in pretty deep to lead plate, or I, I don't know, maybe half an inch or something. How thick is that lead plate? I mean, that thing. It's like an inch and an eighth yeah, thick. Yeah, and it's all lead. So yeah, I think it's gonna stop the. Uh, it'll probably look just like that. Yeah, probably a little deeper, but yeah, a little deeper. Lead, it's softer. softer. Yeah. Softer. But let's give it a try. Let's put out the I, whole. Uh, okay, this, I predict it's gonna stick in there like a, and 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 be stuck in there like a cigar in oh, Groucho's we're, mouth. Then we're gonna have to pull it out with our. Uh, you, right. Yeah, it'll be stuck in the lid. Acceleration extractors. Yeah. Um, well, let's give it a try. We are gonna shoot. Uh, Danny uh, hand carved these gold out of out of solid gold. <laughs> these uh, lead plates. Solid gold he called, plated <laughs> paint. He hand carved lead plates out of solid gold. Now that is an exchange on your on on your investment right there. <laughs> so uh, let's try and shoot one up. Uh, we we messed one up last week, so we'll probably use that one again. And let's see if it makes it how deep it makes it into that thing. Okay. Perhaps we shall be surprised. In test number three, we see much better stability than test number two. Again, we see absolutely no spin on the projectile, and it's flying in a kind of a nose down orientation. And that's probably why it hit a little bit low. And you probably noticed that the slug just shattered on impact. A one inches of aluminum is tough stuff. That's why some people use it for armor, for APCs and stuff. And now, the 30 pound lead plate. I think I'm ready. All right, on the F. Oh. Oh, Lord. Wow. Right through it? Right through it? Get out of here! Have we ever had anything go right through a lead plate? Uh, no. Son of a... This has to be a Tau Flare Mouse first. And I'm glad to say I was here to see it. <laughs> I don't know if we've ever had anything make it all the way through. 30 pound lead plate. All the way through. I mean, look at that. Even came with a patented wiggle. But that brass round not only looks like it was flying straight because it made a nice little... Pit. It was. It was flying good. Yeah. This thing, you know... This thing last week hit sideways. You can see what rounds do when they hit sideways, but this thing plowed through nose first and out the back. <laughs> I don't know if anything's ever gone through all the way through this plate. Yeah. That is crazy. Looking in the back too, look what we found. <laughs> oh 
we gotta try to find that in the sand now. Get your metal detector. The better part is that Jeff had me aiming for the F. Yep. Danny's hand carved F. And uh, I'll be damned if it didn't hit. Uh, okay, I'll tell you, you win the most accurate shooter of the week. Stand by. Of the week. Of this, the this, week. this week. There needs to be a shoot off between Brianna and Danny. And Officer Greg can't shoot. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, oh. This isn't me, this is the round. But man, that is crazy. I'm just impressed with the. I'm impressed with the penetration. Folks. Yeah, yeah. So, Danny's Bitcoin there. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go try it in a soda machine and see if we can get something out of it. <laughs> all right, Del Flay, the crew, I got to thank you all for the blessings and the, the prayers and the well wishes. Uh, had to have a little surgery done. Uh, let's just say for the moment uh, I'm a little short on lung capacity. Other than that, I don't know anything, but I will keep you guys updated. I just got to say I love you all and I thank you and I'll be back. Peace out. Never in a million years did I think this would penetrate the lead plate. If you were to ask me a week ago what it would take to penetrate the lead plate, I would say it would take a very hard material traveling at a very high velocity with a very small profile or with a really sharp pointed nose. Definitely not a blunt, large diameter, very slow projectile like this. Anyway, I hope you were as surprised as we were. We were <laughs> giggling like a couple schoolgirls. We couldn't believe it went through. Well, there you go. A very fun test, and thank you, Evan, for sending these to us. And also, please get well, Danny. We'll see you soon.